Well, welcome to our discussion on the D6 Fusion lesson for May the 10th. And the title of it is In Six Days. And the theme is about how old is the earth, answering that question as we look at this special topic again. We're going to look at several different passages of, of Scripture. Uh, the first one is out of Genesis chapter 1. It's a whole first chapter and then first three verses of chapter 2. We're not going to read all of that. But I just want to read the first few verses of it just to kind of put us in that context. And then we'll look at 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, verses 3 through 6, and Mark chapter 10, verse 6, and then Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11, which is a portion of the Ten Commandments. So we'll get to those in just a moment. Before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer, though, to begin our study. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today. We thank you for your many blessings you've given us. Lord, we thank you for uh, your word that we're about to look at. Lord, we're thankful for the ability you've given us to be able to communicate with church um, over Facebook and over the internet. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you would use all means that we have in order to, to uh, make your word go around the world. Lord, we pray for um, our missionaries who are um, in some cases still trying to raise funds to be able to go back to their mission field. Lord, we pray for those who are on the mission field, and we just ask, Lord, that you would uh, give them a peace and a comfort with all things. Lord, we pray for your will to be done in our individual lives each day. And Lord, we pray that uh, now as we look to your word that you would guide our hearts and our minds. And we pray this in your son's name. Amen. All right, so uh, let's take a look first at Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to read just a few verses just to kind of set us in uh, the thought here of creation. It says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, Let there be an expanse in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the expanse and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse, and it was so. And God called the expanse heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. And I'm going to stop there. That's the first ten verses. And then let's look at uh, Mark cha or Exodus chapter, let's do Exodus chapter 20 first, uh, verses 8 through 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath, to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work. On it you shall not do any work. You or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Okay. And then uh, Mark chapter 10, verse 6. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Okay. And then Second um, Peter chapter 3, I've got that one, and verse 3. And it says, Knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires. They will say, Where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. For they deliberately overlook this fact, that the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God. And that by these, and that by uh, means of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. But by the same word, the heavens and earth that now exist are stored up for the fire, being kept until the day of judgment and destruction 
of the ungodly. And that was actually through verse 7. Uh, again, the title of the lesson is In Six Days, and looking at just kind of the, the view of uh, creation and the question that always floats around of were the, the six days that God speaks of in Genesis actually literal days or were they uh, different than that? So we want to talk about that. But before we do, looking at our first question that we have, and, and you can get the questions off our church Facebook page or um, off the text message. And if you didn't get the text and you'd like to, then send me, if you would send me your number and we'll make sure you get included on that. Uh, the first question, though, is when there are different opinions or interpretations on an issue, how would you weed through those various opinions or interpretations to come up with your own conclusion or belief? So um, this could apply to uh, not only this discussion, but all discussions in just this manner. But thinking about the different interpretations of the days, uh, were they six days, were they not? So how would you sort through the various opinions and interpretations and come to our own conclusion with this? You have to research it and go to reliable resources and then form your own opinion. Kind of like if you're trying to figure out how often leap year occurs. Mm. <laughs> leap year. Every four years. I would say before you do that, you need to read the text yourself and develop your own understanding and opinion of what it says. Because the Holy Spirit typically works in accordance with Scripture or works within scripture. So looking at the text and actually reading it and allowing the spirit to work and show you what the text says and then going to outside sources. And I would say look at sources that are in accordance with like what you thought it said and then not be afraid to look at the other ones just to see if you missed something in the context or something like that. And you, can always, you can always use scripture to in interpret scripture as well. So uh, if it's... If it references it in multiple places, because the Bible was written over many different years and many different authors, then there's some reliability that can be had by doing that. Just at the end of the day, the only metric or scale that you can use to form an opinion on the Scripture is Scripture. That should be what you first and foremost go to to understand what the Scripture is saying. And the only issue with like looking up... Uh, like sources that agree with what you've formed your opinion on. So I'd say that you'd have to be careful not to get into like a uh, confirmation bias kind of thing where like if you only look at your side of the argument, you right. never see the other side. You have to have an open mind when you look. Which you did say, like looking at the other side. So the, the, uh, uh, the other thing that I would add to what you said is that um, we also have to approach uh, God and ask for the Holy Spirit to help us interpret scripture as well because um you know god the christ said that uh, the comforter would come which would help us to help remind us of uh all that he had said which in our case would be all of scripture that we have to read so uh, we got to look at reliable sources uh individuals that you can trust that have looked and studied over scripture so that when you kind of start forming your own opinion, you can say, am I way out of line here, you know, whatever, and then keep the open mind. Using scripture to interpret scripture, reading it, see if it's there. Uh, those are all uh, really important things uh, to look at and to think on, and then prayer uh, involved in all of that as well. So That's where good Christian mentors, we've talked about having those a lot too, come into play because... You know, if you want a biblical worldview, you if you're asking questions about, you know, if you're trying to find out what you believe, if I went to ask you if I was right or I went to ask somebody in the world, you're going to get two totally different explanations possibly from somebody. And that's where uh, uh, being involved in a Sunday school or a, a Bible study of some kind can really help because you have the ability to ask those questions in a smaller setting um, where other people maybe have studied it out or, or know where to find it in scripture. So uh, those things are important. Um, you know, it's, it's one thing to walk in and have a worship service, which we'd really like to do now, but, but we can't. And then uh, it's another thing to um, actually add, and that's kind of the next step in, in a little bit of a discipleship from a, a new believer is actually getting connected to a, 
a Bible study of some kind and having those mentors you talk about. So that's good. All right, question two then. Uh, what are some different Christian views of the age of the earth or the amount of time God took to create the earth? So I've already mentioned the literal six days, um, six 24-hour days as we would uh, know them today. What are some other views? Uh, the only other thing I would know of would be kind of the uh, metaphorical seven days where it wasn't necessarily seven 24-hour days that we think of, but just seven of a time period that God had because time as we know it wouldn't have really existed before God created it. Okay. So old earth versus young earth. So that that a day could equal just yeah. about 100 years sure. or 1,000 years, whatever. Okay. Do we know of any others? I don't know. That's those are the two, in, in Christian view, th those are the, kind of the two. Um, in a Christian, now if you're looking outside of Christianity, you'll find a lot of other ideas floating around. But in Christian Christianity, you're going to find those two things really. And and that kind of goes back to do you, do you view earth as old or young? And old meaning um, that a day would represent hundreds or thousands of years. So then um, they would, an individual that believed that would also say that like when you get into the genealogy that there would be generations that would not be listed that would then explain how the, the earth was much older than what it is when you just add up generations you know, from the Bible. So um, the, the literal six day is, is kind of the one that, that we're going to talk more about here as we go through this. Um, I think you can make a solid case uh, for that literal six day. Um, but, uh, you know, there's others, like we said, that have a view of it being different than that as well. And sometimes people just say, well, you know, it could be, and they don't necessarily believe that. They just kind of throw it out there that it could be more than one day. Um, just to kind of set the background for this in question three, is the debate on the age of the earth a salvation issue? I don't think so. No. No. It's where you have to practice spiritual triage. Which is? Yeah. You rank the things that are like of the utmost importance that you must agree on or you probably can't worship in the same church together. So issues would be if like one person believed that Christ set, was Christ made salvation available to all and another person would think that it meant like works gets you to heaven. And those two people probably wouldn't be in the same church together. Then there's others that um, issues that are a little bit smaller that you probably wouldn't go to the same church but you could be in like the same church denomination or something just a little bit different and there's ones that like they're just minor issues where it doesn't really matter if y'all disagree y'all can be in the same service together such so as something like what type of music you like it's color of the carpet issues yeah so there's also you know, to take that discussion a little bit further too there's also like um, we hold scripture to be authoritative over yeah. everything well then you get to like our denomination, and so you have the, the bylaws of the, the denomination that we we kind of, as a free will Baptist, say we adhere to those things. But those never take the place of Scripture. Scripture is always over it's that. It's kind of like how we have the Constitution as the biggest thing, and then laws in some states, and then city ordinances underneath that. Yeah. And just so, hierarchy. So each individual church, then we have a church covenant, and church covenant then is not at the same level as what the denominational um, treaties would be. And it's definitely not at the same level as, as you know, Scripture would be. All those things should be based on Scripture, but um, when it comes down to it, Scripture would hold the, the, the authority of all. So uh, I think we all said it's not, the age of the earth is not a salvation issue. Um, has no bearing on whether a person could be saved or could not be saved because it's not, you know, Christ didn't say if you believe in me and believe it's only six days, then you're saved. <laughs> he just said, you know, those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what we're told from Scripture. So 
Uh, not a salvation issue, so it's just one that gets brought up in a lot of discussion sometimes. And sometimes people are very firm in, in what they believe, and sometimes people say, you know, it, it is a, I'm going to use the term secondary, it's a secondary item, so you know, I'm not going to be too worried about it. It's a great discussion, which is kind of where I, I leave it as well. Um, but it's not anything that determines our salvation. So it's not of the utmost importance, so to speak. All right, question four then. The original word yom, Hebrew word yom, uh, that is translated as they in the Bible, most commonly references what? And then uh, what if there is a number associated with that word, with yom? If yom has a number associated with it, what would that mean? So, like, I kind of gave the answer away there, probably. <laughs> but um, the original Hebrew word yom that is translated as day in the Bible most commonly references what? I'd really like to say Red Robin, but that's yum. But the way you're saying it. <laughs> yum. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like the Red Robin commercials, you know. Yum, Red Robin. Yeah, we, we. <laughs> Okay. Day. I think my coffee just kicked in. <laughs> What, uh, what kind of day? A great day. It's Mother's Day. Yeah. <laughs> well, they would measure days from evening to evening, if I believe. So, so 6 o'clock would actually begin the next, yeah. next day. But it, um, it actually means a literal day. Like we would literally call it 24-hour day, day. That's what uh, Yom actually is most commonly translated as or referenced to. So when you put a number associated with it, what does that then mean? How, how many days? <laughs> it actually, uh, anytime that you see like first day or second day in the Bible, then it literally means a day. It always means a day. So it's never a, like um, the word yom just by itself can actually mean age or a period of time. It's most commonly a literal day, but it can mean an age or a period of time. But when you put a, a number with it, then it literally means a day. It always means a day, a specific day then. Well, it also says on every one of the days, it was evening and morning, and it was the first day, or it was evening and morning and the second day. Evening and morning, so if it wasn't gonna be 24 hours, it probably wouldn't say evening and morning every time with day or yom. And it has numbers associated with it, so um, you know we, we can pretty well take that pretty literally, but, um, but again, uh, some interpret it in a different fashion as well. So let's look then to uh, New Testament and individuals in the New Testament that, that would have referenced things that happened in Old Testament. So uh, if we consider Genesis as a historical record of the beginning of the earth or beginning of the world and then uh, the flood and all the way up to Abraham then, um, let's look at what someone from the New Testament then says concerning this these historical events. So uh, in Second Peter uh, chapter 3, verses 3 through 6 that we read, um, what does Peter, what does those verses tell us about Peter's belief concerning those things? Do you still have it marked? Yeah, I was about to say, <laughs> did we read that again? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Y'all can turn there if you want. I guess so. Yeah, if you had kind of okay, it. Okay, here it is. Old Testament I'm going to start in verse 5. Uh, For they deliberately overlooked this fact that the heavens existed long ago, the earth was formed out of water and through water by the word of God, and that by means of these, the world that then existed was deluged with water and perished. I mean, it's just Peter agreeing with what Genesis says is the truth. Okay. What parts of it? The first two days. Well, also tells us by the word of God, so it tells us he spoke creation into existence, mm -hmm. which is what Children's Church learned last week. What is the uh, deluge with water and perished referencing? Noah and the flood. There would be Noah and the flood. So Peter's making reference to that, um, meaning that he would have believed 
in that event that would have occurred. Um, he makes reference to uh, the earth was formed out of water and through water. Uh, you mentioned by the word of God, but that it was formed out of water and through water, therefore coinciding with the, the creation story as well. Um, and then, um, let's see. Anything else that we see there? He does mention that, that people, um, if you back up to verse 4, verse 3, knowing this, first of all, that scoffers will come in the last days with scoffing, following their own sinful desires, they will say, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things are continuing as they were from the beginning of creation. We find there's some people saying that today, that you know everything's just going on just like it always has been. Um, so they kind of will a little bit make fun of those that that say that you know Christ is going to return and things are going to change and that type thing. All right. Um, question six: What is the Jewish work week based on? The six days of creation and day of rest. Yeah, which is what you read out of Exodus that God gave to uh, Moses, the children of Israel, in Exodus, and um, it has continued to be based upon that even today. And we find that that even our non-Jewish civilization. Is uh, has their work work week based on um, that six days within a, a day of rest is what it's supposed to be. Um, we work a five day week now and sometimes four, depending on where you work. You can thank but Henry Ford for that. You can thank Henry Ford for that, I guess. Uh, question seven then: How is Second Peter three eight sometimes misinterpreted? We did not read that, so if you look at verse eight. It says, but do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. So how is that sometimes misinterpreted? It could be interpreted that the days that he was mentioning at the beginning of creation were meaning a thousand years, but it was really just meaning that, like, metaphorically speaking, the sense of time in heaven or the place after would be different than on earth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's interesting too. We didn't talk about this. Um, I forgot when we talked about it in the young adult class. It's been maybe last year sometime, but you know, a literal day on earth is specific to earth. Like there's not another planet that, that a day is 24 hours because distance from the sun, traveling around the sun, all that's different. So uh, when God created the earth and he created it in these seven days and he then prescribed to the Hebrews, um, or yeah, to the Israelites, that, um, that they would work six and then be you know, off the seven, this was literally a prescription for earth. Um, but not for all of the universe. It was just specifically for Earth. Um, so this one day, a lot of people will use this verse 8. Uh, one day is as of a thousand years. Or one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. People will use that to then say, like you said, that, that um, when Genesis records it, that they're not really talking about a literal 24-hour day, but could be talking about a thousand years representing a day or a much greater time. Any thoughts or questions? Okay, question eight then. What is the best way to conduct ourselves if we meet another believer with a different belief on the age of the earth? And then what if they are not believers? So first, an individual that is a believer, what's the best way to conduct ourselves if we meet that individual and they have a different view of the age of the earth. So a different view of literal six days of creation. I'd say, you, I mean, you treat them the exact same way. It's just a difference of opinion on interpretation of scripture that's not going to affect either one of you ending up in heaven. So at the end, 
it doesn't really matter. You can both worship Jesus beside each other and it not make a difference. Okay. So the um, the uh, the actual question we talked about earlier of uh, it's not a salvation issue is something we have to keep in mind when we have this discussion with a with a non Christian or with a Christian. I'm sorry. And um, we have to keep that in mind just the same as we do many other things that come up in uh, a church setting sometimes. One of y'all brought up um, music a while ago about how you know, there's different forms of music. And, and sometimes we can start believing that, that only a certain type of Christian music is what you know, the, the church has to have. And while we all grow partial to um, the kind that maybe we grew up with or, or what we like, um, as long as the song is glorifying God and not glorifying man or the artist or, or that kind of thing, then it can be used in the right way. But we do have to keep in mind that uh, this is not a salvation issue. We should show respect. You mentioned that. Uh, should show respect for the other individual. Uh, what if we, we run across a non-believer, though, and we have this discussion of age of earth? Because when you get into individuals that do not believe in Christianity, or not, you know, not believe in Christianity, then you find that they um, start talking about, you know, ice ages and all this kind of stuff from throw out millions of years ago. And so how do we have that conversation with those individuals and conduct ourselves. That's when you do what one of my professors called taking the roof off of their worldview. Okay. And you ask them questions just like people ask us about what we believe and why. And as you're asking them to explain, you keep asking questions where there's contradictions or where there's like some type of mistake or flaw in the worldview so that they begin to doubt it and you're like poking holes in their view or their argument. And then eventually when that view is destroyed, they'd be open to listening to what you believe. So you don't necessarily um, start telling them everything that's wrong about theirs. Right. I mean, you don't tell them everything that's right about yours, but you just ask questions to make them contradict themselves. Is that right. what okay. And that's where any issue can become a salvation issue if someone's caught up on that necessarily. Like, um, if that's where I honestly think where the viewpoint of trying to make the days be a much longer time period probably came for them trying to merge what modern science would say is how the earth is billions of years old just trying to merge that viewpoint in Christianity same way that Christianity has in the past done with many different cultures trying to kind of mix that stuff in to get them to be Christians but at the end you have to say what the scripture is and not try to like merge what it is with the scientific yeah. viewpoint so getting back to what I was saying <laughs> boy I went off on a long trail there it's okay yeah um, with that being them being caught up on that like if a scientist say is caught up on the age of the earth as the issue to why he could not believe Christianity then that does become a salvation issue and you have to treat it as such not just as something that doesn't matter Okay, so you're saying that because of their background in science or whatever, they yeah. can't believe in a younger earth, therefore they can't become a Christian. Yeah. Then you treat it as a... What I was making is that with anything that we would say isn't a salvation issue, under certain circumstances it could become such. And so if it does with that specific instance, then we would have to treat it as such in order to like let the person... Or you'd have salvation. to isolate the two. Yes. Um, well, or how we handle that. discussing those things with someone, especially a non-Christian, if we're so rude and disrespectful to them in that process of a discussion, it could become a salvation issue because we could turn them off from, to Christianity by being offensive or rude to them. Well, that's if just you your don't, witness in general. Right, but if you're not handling yourself properly and letting the Holy Spirit lead you or having the fruit of the Spirit evident in your life as you're approaching those situations, then you can be so offensive that... It can become a problem. 
So it's not truly a salvation issue, but our mannerisms can make it be a problem. It is interesting, too, going back to what you said a minute ago. Um, if we know enough about Christianity and about, um, in, in this example, creation, and about what an individual is trying to argue, then we can actually blow holes in their theory by asking them questions uh, and then lead them to um, them having interest in what actually is truth. But we have to, we have to be able to know that in order to do it. And um, you know, if, if we know enough about actually truly portraying science, science actually por- supports a young earth um, but it's got twisted many times to where they try to make it support an, an old earth, but it actually supports a young earth. So um, it's, it's really important that we know um, what we're trying to discuss in order to be able to lead an individual that's having some of these questions. So we have to really um, commit ourselves to, to knowing this type of information in order to be able to have those discussions with non-Christians. And uh, sometimes we may not have that information. We have to um, lean upon someone else. And you kind of mentioned it earlier about having those mentors in your life that you can turn to that would help in those type of discussions. So I think um, from what we've looked at here in this just this discussion, I think the Bible does support you know a, a young earth I think it is reliable, as we've always said. Um, and I think that when you see an individual in the New Testament, such as Peter, that references back to those events, I mean, he was staking his life upon it hundreds of years later. And, um, and he's referencing them as though they are true as well. And so that gives us some, some confidence that, that even Peter in his day and time was uh, believing in a, a, um, uh, the events of the Old Testament as they were recorded as historical and as um, not just some kind of a drama that was being written to, to try to dramatize how creation happened, but it was literally the history being recorded in that way. So um, any, any last things before we go? All right. Um, so we hope in some way this might have helped uh, you talk through maybe with your, with your kids or even just in conversation or maybe it piques some interest about uh, studying a little more in depth of a young earth type situation or, or young earth type perspective. And if so, and if you need, have some questions and you want to talk about them, feel free to give me a call and we'd be glad to discuss them. So good to, to see you all. And with that, um, this will be Barnett signing off.